I got a lot of people leaving comments on my last video about Cobra and Trust saying it is your responsibility to take care of him. You have to force him to do what you feel is necessary to do what you feel constitutes good care. And so that's my first issue. Our idea of what constitutes good care and the horse's idea may be completely different things. And I don't think that means that we have the right to steamroller over all of their own wisdom and their own ownership of their own bodies just because we think this is necessary. So, so you've been working with horses since you were five? Yeah, off and on, yeah. Race horses, show horses, yeah, I stunt work. horses. Yeah, I, and this is the first time I've ever worked around feral horses. <laughs> <laughs> So Kalia today had this massive thing hanging from her mane. Jeez, I'd really like to get that off. Is that necessary for good care? Is that gonna affect your health? There are no decisions that these horses are making that put them into an emergency state of care. They are not at risk of death or permanent damage or um, loss of quality of life or any of those things. So us humans, we get on our little high horse with all our ideas of what's proper and what's necessary and what makes a good horse mama. And I don't even call myself mama. I think that's infantilizing these beings who are equal to me. And no, I don't think it's necessary for me to be their leader. I think leadership like respect is something that either exists or it doesn't. It's not something you can manufacture. It's not, you better respect me. Have you ever respected someone who holds that energy? Have you ever respected someone who's manipulated you into doing what they say? No, you naturally will listen to the people whose very being and totalitary of their wisdom and the way they move through the earth and the, the energetic placement and power that they carry in their body signals to you that this person is trustworthy and this person is capable and this person might just know a little bit more about you about some things but even then you don't give your power away to that person and if you do in my opinion you need to do some growing up you need to do some standing in your own power and putting your own body wisdom first because all horses they have a choice it's either we take off out of fear or we fight out of fear um, and I think these guys would fight faster than, than, than a trained horse that's been ingrained with that whip. I mean, he and I, we've chased, we've chased coyotes off together. Awesome. You know, they actually let me know when there's coyotes on this land. That's cool. I like that. And if you think that humans are the wisest, most forward thinking, long term thinking, capable beings on this planet, why don't you take a look around at the state of our earth? So we're not even talking about care, we're talking about us in our know-it-all way, instead of listening to the wisdom of the animals, instead of connecting with their deeper, wilder wisdom, we are just taking our limited human parameters and sticking it on them. I don't put any of those human constructs onto any of my horses and certainly not these wild Mustangs. Wild horses that accept you. That's special. Every, every trained horse is gonna accept you. You're just another person. But to these guys, you're not just another person. You're either part of the herd or you're not. Right? Right, funny face. So with Kalia, who I, I've never touched her mane before. I don't stroke her neck. Sometimes we say hi with a little, you know, she touches my hand and I've asked if I could touch her bum once because she wasn't moving. And I said, well, I really, I'm tired and I really need you to move. If you don't move, I'm gonna touch your bum to get you to move. And she was like, fine. So we've had little points of contact like that, but it's not necessary. She doesn't require it. I don't require it. I'm not living in fear that she's gonna need urgent medical care. And if I can't put my hands all the way all over her, what am I gonna do? 
because that's again a human construct that comes out of fear. Maka has been teaching me. I can ask him, and he, actually it's more he asks me to come in and out of small penned areas, to come in and out of the horse trailer, to fall. He will follow me. We'll go. We will do all of that stuff. And he does not let me touch him because he doesn't want me to. So he's been teaching me the incredible number of things that we can do in collaboration. So they're used to people, but in a completely different way. Um, one way that that manifests itself is that, for instance, here's a, here's a really good one. When I'm working with a lot of horses, when I'm feeding and cleaning up after them, if a horse is in my way, with one finger, I can touch that horse and go, and that horse will move. That doesn't work with these horses. They push back. And they, or they look at you like, what? So back to Kalia. Today, I spent this horse who I have touched maybe a grand total of, I mean, I, honestly, I don't touch her for more than five seconds at a time. I stood here and I got my olive oil and I worked this out of her mane for 45 minutes. And not once did she say, go away or back off or leave me alone. And I was actually singing to her. And I told her, the second you ask me to leave, I will leave. I will walk away. I am not, I do not have an agenda. If I have to leave this hanging, it's going to kill me, but I'll do it. <laughs> because it's your body and you're in charge. Something's out there. Coyotes, I think. Anyway, that's what I do at Listen to Your Horse. I am not about training horses. I am not about being a good leader and all these words of dominance and ranking that humans come up with. If you look past the popular literature and you go into equine ethology of people who spend years watching wild herds, there is no such thing as herd ranking. That is a domestic response to limited resources. So what I'm interested in doing here, I've had horses since I was eight years old. I'm not a newbie. I'm not concerned about my own safety. I am perfectly familiar with how horses move and how fast they are. But I don't I'll feel like it's dangerous at all. If you like horses and you know horses, it's not dangerous. You just have to be on your toes. It's dangerous if you're not thinking. If you just do, 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 and not really paying attention to what's going on? Yeah, I, I can see how it would be dangerous for a certain type of person. I don't think it's dangerous for me because I'm, I'm in tune to where they are and what they're doing. And I think my very first day that I got here, I realized that that was something that you had to develop with these horses. I am not telling you how to be with your horse. Very, very important. This is not a, oh, I'm doing this, so do this with your horses. I never once say that in any of my videos and I, I'm only coming on here to explain myself because I'm getting tired of writing the same thing to people in the comments section. So I thought I'll just shoot a video and if people can't be bothered to watch this video, then I don't need to answer their comments anyway. I'm not saying that this way that I'm doing it is better. I am sharing my stories. I am sharing my exploration. I am sharing my questions. And sometimes I get answers and I share those too to my understanding. I am continually open to being wrong. I'm continually open to having a working theory or paradigm. And then the horses take me to a whole other zone or level of understanding. Worlds within worlds. And then that shifts everything. So what are the benefits for people that do this? Love. When you have acceptance, especially from wild creatures that shouldn't accept you. I love that, it makes me happy. Being around horses makes me happy. The hunter jumper or the dressage horse or the race horse or the thoroughbred, whatever it is, they all have a background that's very human oriented that pushes them to behave a very certain way and these horses do not have that. So if you're gonna have a relationship with these horses, it has to be based on what they want, not what they've been taught. I am not a horse trainer. I am not advocating a, another method of horsemanship. I am just telling stories and sharing experiences. Here, it's like this tight little group. And you really can see the relationships that all these horses have. The, the ones who are besties and hang together and the ones 
like to eat, like to eat together, right? And the ones that don't. And you get to be a part of that. You get to be kind of like a part of their little, their little herd, you know, if they accept you. And I like that. That's nice. That's good. That's the best part of this is them. It's all about us and what's happening here. Because me and these guys find that way more interesting than training a horse to make it do what I want it to do and saying, look what I can make my horse do. Isn't this fun? Hi, Cobra. Hi, sweetie pum. That to me is totally boring. And this is what I love. In a setting like this, because they are feral horses and because they are in together as a family or as a herd and they're a segregated herd, there's actually two separate herds here, I believe, and one um, domestic Andalusian mare. With that, there's a pecking order. And if one horse is in the wrong position, another horse has to come and correct that horse and tell him, hey, you're not supposed to be here right now. If you're standing in the way, they don't care. They're not trained horses. There's no polite here. They don't give a darn where you're standing. They got business to take care of. And so you have to develop a sense of where these horses are and where they're supposed to be. Because if you get in the middle of a horse trying to correct another horse, this horse weighs approximately 2,000 pounds, I want to say, between 1,800 and 2,000 pounds. Right now, she's looking pretty big. And when she decides, get out of the way, you better not be in the way, because she's not polite. She's not going to ask you to move. So you, gotta, you have to develop a sense of where these horses are and where the other horses are. They will move their huge bodies wherever they need to without any forgiveness and permission. <laughs> so, yes, you have to develop a sense of, of where the horses are and for safety. Do you like that or do you find it a hassle or you think it's too dangerous? I love it. One day, I can tell you, I was super hungover. I was at a stag party and uh, got, got a few beers, a few whiskeys and some tequila that night. So I came here and I had to be here early that morning because I had appointments that day. And so I came and I was hung over and not really paying attention. And sure enough, I did get a bump from a horse that day. That didn't knock me over or anything, but I wasn't paying attention. And I got a bump. Nice, thank you. <laughs> and then there's that. <laughs> Thanks, Mama. Nice one, Odie. See that you go slap my butt, I go fart in your face. <laughs> This is what jazzes me up. If you find it interesting, watch. If you don't, there's tons of horse trainers and horsemanship advocates and horsemanship methods on YouTube. Have at it. And, you know, awesome to those people because they're doing what they feel led to do in the world. And they're sharing what they want to share with the world. And I'm not here to say anybody's wrong. And I'm not here to say that what I'm doing here is right and that anybody else should do it. So just telling stories.